Okay, it was May 2007. Republicans across the country were in the process of trying to figure out who their nominee for president was going to be in the upcoming election to succeed George W. Bush. One guy who really wanted the job was a former governor from Massachusetts who that year sort of tried to run on the I'm a tough guy platform. I'm glad they're at Guantanamo. I don't want them on our soil. I want them in Guantanamo when they don't get the access to lawyers they get when they're on our soil. Some people have said we had to close Guantanamo. My view is we had to double Guantanamo. We had to make sure that the terrorists... Double Guantanamo! Yes, Mitt Romney lost uh, that Republican primary. He lost to this guy. I'm for closing Guantanamo Bay because it's become a symbol. It, it, it may be one of the nicest places in the world to live in, but it has become a symbol, and we need to close Guantanamo. Well, then why were you... John McCain uh, won the Republican primary that year, and at the time, he was really vocal about his desire to close the prison at Guantanamo. That position was also held by the man who was president at the time. I'd like to end Guantanamo. I'd like it to be over with. Uh, one of the things we will do is we'll send people back to their home countries. So that was the position on the Republican side in the lead up to the 08 presidential election. Here's how Democrats were dealing with the same issue at the same time. We should shut down. I was his first day as president. I would shut down Guantanamo. I voted to not build the new $36 million park. I called for closing it three years ago. I will close Guantanamo, which I think is a national embarrassment. We're going to lead by shutting down Guantanamo and restoring habeas corpus in this country so that we offer them an example. That last guy, of course, went on to win the Democratic nomination, but he didn't have competition on his close Guantanamo position. All the Democrats thought that. All the Democrats, including their eventual nominee, said close Guantanamo. The Republican president said close Guantanamo. The Republican presidential nominee said close that Guantanamo. Heading into the 08 presidential election, there was a clear national consensus, left, right, and center, that closing Guantanamo was not only the right thing to do, nobody really was against it. At least nobody who was going to be in power, right? It was going to happen. And so to nobody's surprise, on his second full day in office, the winner of that presidential election signed an executive order calling for the prompt closure of Guantanamo. In that executive order, President Obama noted that 500 Guantanamo prisoners had already been sent home or to another country under President Bush. President Obama set a deadline of one year to get the rest of them out, to send them home or release them or put them in the U.S. justice system, whatever was the most appropriate. But the idea was take one year to close the thing down. Closing Guantanamo was a foregone conclusion. It was the one area of absolute bipartisan consensus on national security. There was no pushback on the Republican side. And even if there had been, Democrats controlled the White House and and both chambers of Congress by a lot after that election. Guantanamo was definitely going to be over. It was going to be closed. And then it did not happen. Less than a month after the president signed the order to close Guantanamo, Republicans in Congress started trying to block any of the prisoners there from being transferred to prisons in the U.S. Not in my backyard. In response, Democrats in Congress folded, they caved, and they, Democrats as well as Republicans, took away the money the White House needed to close Guantanamo. The next year, Congress again took away the money for closing Guantanamo. In the last month, when Democrats still controlled both the House and the Senate, they voted again to block the president from transferring anyone out of Guantanamo and into the real U.S. justice system. And so now, more than four years after the president signed the order to close Guantanamo, which everybody thought was a foregone conclusion, not only has the White House not closed Guantanamo, but Congress, with the help of the president's own party, has put up a series of barriers to keep that from happening indefinitely. That is what happened four years ago. But today, this president charged back into that fight, explicitly calling on Congress to get out of his way this time. Given my administration's relentless pursuit of al-Qaeda's leadership, there is no justification beyond politics for Congress to prevent us from closing a facility that it should, should have never been opened. Today, I once again call on Congress to lift the restrictions on detainee transfers from Gitmo. Why is President Obama doing this now? What, what goes into the decision about that kind of timing? And for people who were there in this administration the first time around, people who were there when the president tried to float this policy before and it sank, what is their understanding of what went wrong the first time? Do they get what the problems were the first time around so they'll be able to get around them now and get done now what they could not get done before? 
a man who can actually answer those questions because he was there and saw it from the inside, joins us next. Imagine a future 10 years from now or 20 years from now when the United States of America is still holding people who have been charged with no crime on a piece of land that is not part of our country. Look at the current situation where we are force feeding detainees who are hold, being held on a hunger strike. I'm willing to uh, cut uh, the young lady who interrupted me some slack because it's worth being passionate about. Is this who we are? Is that something our founders foresaw? Is that the America we want to leave our children? More on the young lady who interrupted him in just a second, but it's an interesting point there, right? I mean, I guess we have sort of gotten used to it, but when you step back from it, it is kind of wacky to think that our country is keeping a prison in another country, and that's where we put people in prison forever without charging them with any crime. And then when they all started to try to kill themselves in protest, we physically forbid them from killing themselves by forcing food into them against their will. The president today trying to show how difficult that will be to explain to history when we are inevitably called to do so. The president today in this speech in some ways picking up where he left off in 09, calling for the closure of that prison that we keep in Cuba. Joining us now is somebody who was there the last time the president tried to close that prison and saw how it went. Robert Gibbs, former White House press secretary. Robert, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for having me, Rachel. So when you, when you were in the White House and, and the president set the goal of closing Guantanamo within a year after he took office, did the failure of that policy sneak up on you guys or could you tell early on that it was going to be in trouble? Well, I, I do think you had a political situation uh, where different parts uh, of the political spectrum were trying to test what they wanted to convince the American people uh, was an inexperienced president. Uh, I do think the politics of it were uh, maybe not as easy as we thought, and I think uh, it, it got away from what we were trying to do pretty quickly. Uh, but I, I do think you have a reelected president that's uh, hunted down and rid the world of Osama bin Laden, who's in fundamentally a different place now than he was even four years ago. Do you have faith that as the president pushes forward with this again, that this time he'll be able to hold even his own party? I mean, the thing that was surprising the first time around was not the Republicans deciding to change their minds and decide they were against closing Guantanamo right. all of a sudden. The thing that was surprising was to see the Democrats tuck their tails between their legs and run. Right. Well, I do think that Democrats are in a fundamentally different political position uh, in dealing with terrorism, again, because of what has happened over the last few years in decimating senior al-Qaeda leadership, in hunting down and ridding the world of Osama bin Laden. Uh, so I do think there is that. I, I still think there is an enormous communications uh, campaign, if you will, that has to take place. Uh, you saw the letters that were being sent to the White House with don't send Guantanamo prisoners here, don't send them there. And I think there will certainly be some of that. Uh, and, and I think we have to also really get some folks out there, particularly from the military. I'd like to see Colin Powell and General David Petraeus again reiterate why they think Guantanamo Bay's detention facility should be closed, because as John McCain eloquently said in the clip you showed, it is a blight on our foreign policy. It is a recruiting tool for Al Qaeda to this day, and it's been exacerbated by this hunger strike. So I think there's a long way Way to go, but let's be clear. You know, we have a supermax facility in Florence, Colorado, about 110 miles south of Denver. Some of the worst people on the planet are housed there with absolutely no danger that they're going to escape. Uh, we keep everybody from Ted Kaczynski to Richard Reed, he's the shoe bomber, the reason we still take our shoes off at the airport, uh, to uh, the underwear bomber uh, from Christmas Day 2009, and a host of other bad people. We can house bad people in this country, uh, and we shouldn't be afraid, uh, as Mitt Romney said in that uh, qu uh, clip that you showed, uh, to demonstrate our values to the world in trying them, uh, and if they're guilty 
imprisoning them if they're not releasing them. But g give it, so you're, ma you're making the case right there for why this should be possible, but you're also saying that work needs to be done, communications work needs to be done in order to sell this so it won't fail again yeah. like it did in 2009. Given the work that needs to be done, why do you think the president is taking on this fight now? Why pick now was the time to do this, given that it's going to take a bunch yeah. of political work to get it done? Well, I think a few things. One, I think this is what the president would consider one of the main unfinished pieces of business from his first term. Uh, the, one of the others, probably immigration reform, uh, which I think is on track to get done at some point in the next year or so. The second thing I think you mentioned is this is simply an unsustainable policy. We cannot continue in perpetuity uh, to keep prisoners at the Guantanamo Bay detention facility. It's just not sustainable. And third, I think, again, and it goes to the unsustainability, which is the geopolitical reality uh, of what this means as a blight to our foreign policy and a recruiting tool uh, to Al Qaeda and its dangerous extremist affiliates. So for all of those reasons, now is the right time. Uh, but again, I, I think it will not be an easy thing to do. But uh, you know, I was heartened by what some people said in Congress today. Certainly there were those that said, oh, you know, tried to scare and do the predictable boogeyman. But there were certainly some uh, that said, you know, we do need to close it. Now we just need to work through or we need to find a plan for how to do that. And I think that is encouraging. Robert Gibbs, former Obama White House Press Secretary. Robert, thank you for your time tonight. I appreciate having Rachel, you Rachel, thank you. All right, hold on. We got more ahead. Today at the president's big deal foreign policy, national security, civil liberty speech, an activist who has been a thorn in the side of two White Houses now, Medea Benjamin from Code Pink, she willed into existence that rarest of things in presidential speeches, an unscripted moment. So today, once again, to, to, today, I'm about to address it, ma'am, but you got, you got to let me speak. I'm about to address it. Chief. Let me address it. Today. Why don't you, you let me address it, man? Why don't you sit down and I will tell you exactly what I'm going to do. President at first seemingly flustered by the interruption, sort of. But then nobody quite knew how it was going to end because the heckling did not stop. She stopped for a second, but then she interrupted the president again and again and again. And eventually he just let her speak. All that while, this was the look on the president's face, listening, standing there listening at what is supposed to be his own speech. But the look of a maybe flustered president being heckled at extraordinary length. We're addressing that, ma'am. Eventually seemed to give way to something else. The voice of that woman uh, is worth paying attention to. Obviously, obviously, uh, obviously I do not agree with much of what she said. And obviously she wasn't listening to me in much of what I said. But these are tough issues. And the suggestion that we can gloss over them is wrong. The activists at Code Pink and Medea Benjamin are, are not trying to make friends. They are out to be disruptive to those with whom they disagree. And the president today reacted in a way that was so surprising, in part, I think, because he thought he was saying something with which anti-war protesters would agree. Essentially, the moment there was, hey, stop interrupting me and you might like what you're hearing. At least some of it, you might like what you're hearing. More ahead.